why the economy is not relevant to the stock market. I know that may sound like heresy. You probably think that your investments and the economy have a lot to do with each other, but I'm here to tell you they don't. They have almost nothing to do with each other. Um, now, you may think that, that I didn't realize that is the conventional wisdom of how it goes, but remember, I'm the unconventional wisdom guy. I'm the guy based on experience that tells you what really happens in real life instead of, instead of what everybody believes. So, so now, first of all, I, um, the reason this is important is because if you look at current events today, there's a lot going on with the economy. We're probably going into a recession here. We're in 2022, probably, probably going to a recession. Actually, might already be in one. Interest rates are high, inf inflation, government problems, lots of crap going on. What does that mean for your investments? And I'm going to tell you, it has nothing to do with your investments. And so let me first give you the evidence of it, and then I'll give you the context for that. All right, so here it is. I'm putting the irrelevant stamp on the economy when it comes to your investments. And it's not just me that said it, it's Peter Lynch, right? So his, his great quote is, I have always said, if you spend 13 minutes a year on economics, you've wasted 10 minutes. And that's, I, I, that's based exactly what I find based on experience. So now let's, let's actually look at this. Okay, first of all, let's look at the actual correlation. You'll see what I'm talking about. So here, this is Canada. I took our GDP, which is probably the best measure of the economy and the stock market. And there's the actual numbers for the last 25 years. So let's look at what actually happened. Now I ran a correlation analysis. The correlation was 15%, okay? Now a lot of people think that the, um, the stock market actually predicts next year. And there is a bit better correlation to it. It's now 23%. Now, in general, what, a, what the statisticians say is uh, anything under 20% is considered to be no correlation. They're not relevant to each other. Last time I did this 10 years ago, the, uh, the one year up was up 33%. So it is a bit more of a guideline of basically it's the stock market this year to the economy next year. So, but actually, so if you want to look at this thing, you can actually, it's hard to tell because the stock market is up, so up and down much more than the economy is, but let's look at, did they go in the same direction, right? So here, here it's, you know, they went, they went down, but then they went up. So they went mostly in the same direction for these couple of days, but here these, you know, you see these big moves, which are not, not the same as, as the market, right? It's a, it's a much more in size. So here there's a big move up, but the market was basically flat. Here the market went down, but, um, but it's uh, but nothing for the economy here. You notice in two thousand eight, there was a big dip here. Um, so actually, here, see, this is the bottom for the stock market is two thousand nine, except um, so for the economy. But the stock market's way up at that time. So if you go through it, you see this kind of most much of the time they're not moving in the, in the same direction at all. So here, there's a big drop and a big up, but, but there's basically a flat on the economy. So they're just not, they're just not really correlated at all. And it's only a 15% correlation. So that's, so no correlation. So I want to sh first show you the stats. Second thing is you think, well, long-term it must have an effect, right? So if over many years, a company economy is really good, that would be good for the stock market there, right? The truth is uh, there really isn't evidence of that either. In fact, so this is a study from 1900 to 2000, it's 100 years with kind of the 16 major, um, major e economies in the world. The correlation is actually negative, negative 0.27. So you'll see, so this is the stock market for all the different countries. And the, 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 the red is the, uh, is the economy, the GDP. And notice how, the, this lined up from the highest stock market returns, but the, generally you see, if anything, the there's not much going on with the uh, with the with the red the GDP here. But if anything, they're they're going the opposite way of what the stock market is when you compare these different countries. So now, I, in my opinion, this the negative is really just a correlation. Uh, sorry, the negative correlation is really just a quirk of the of the actual data. It's not it, it's not because. Uh, a good economy is bad for the stock market. It just it just some quirks. Like some of these countries here were very small and growing and growing fast, but not very not um, but not very vibrant stock markets. They were very stock market friendly. So Spain and Italy and Japan, some some of those. Germany lost a couple of wars. So I think it, that's kind of what what's behind it. 
uh, but behind the negative. So it really just go with the same number. There's basically no correlation here. So now why, let's, why could that happen? So the first thing is, uh, if you look at the GDP, GDP is what happens here in Canada and it's made of four components. So these are roughly the percentages that, that they're there. So it's mostly consumer spending, not what happened to your business. So, and, and consumers, they tend to mostly spend the same, even when the economies, you know, when the market's going up and down, uh, most people are kind of into their long-term, into their lifestyle and don't really adjust their spending all that much. So, and what they're spending may or may not affect the companies that you that you that you that you're in, or the Canadians, the the Canadian stock market companies. They could be buying things from other companies or other countries, uh, like companies that are uh, foreign companies or American companies. So, also a lot of GDP is just government spending. So, jo government can make the GDP look good. Oh, look how our economy is going because the government just goes out and spends all kinds of money, and it makes the economy look good. But that's not real growth, and it may or may not. It probably doesn't have necessarily money end up in the in the hands of the companies in the Canadian stock market. So that's that's a different perspective of what, what's happening. So also, you know, if you talk to business owners and ask them, look, what happened, what affects the, the profits of your company? You know, because eventually, you know, the profits of the company will over time affect what, the, what happens with the stock. Okay, so if the profits keep going up over time, there's a lot of sentiment that brings it up and down, but over time, it's going to eventually rise. So, but what affects it? And it'll give you this whole long list of stuff, competition, taxes, available labor, new products, technology, cost cutting, regulation, suppliers, all kinds of things. In the economy, it's just one item in that whole list. So lots of things that affect your, your, account, your company, um, the company profits other than the economy. So now this is another weird way to look at it, but because I'm an accountant, this is how I can see the difference. Okay, so this is a typical profit and loss statement. So let's say you have a company that they have, they have a million in sales. They bought some products for seven hundred thousand and sold it for a million. And so this is their gross profit is three hundred thousand. Then they have about two hundred thousand in, in expenses, you know, administration and sales and that kind of stuff, and a profit of a hundred thousand. Now the GDP. So remember, I showed you the different components. The GDP kind of adds up consumer spending and business sales. Uh, you know, it's the sales of the of the business and uh, and government spending. So it's it's if anything, it's closest to looking at uh, this. It's not a perfect example, but it's close to taking the gross sales of the company to go to the GDP. So, however, the stock market. You know, you you may have heard that the they talk about the price earnings ratio of the stock market. To it. I give you an idea of how expensive it is. And normal is, you know, 15 to 20, that kind of thing. So, you, and that's based on the bottom line of the company. 15, uh, you know, you take the your profit, multiply by 15 or 20, and that's kind of what maybe the stock should would be a fair value. Of course, depending on how fast it's growing and all that, but that's giving you a sentence, sentiment. So now you've got this, this GDP is this number, stock market is 15 times this number. See, there's lots of stuff in between that can, that can affect that can affect it, like cost cutting and other things that affect one but not the other. And a way to look at that is this. Um, let's look at your own personal budget, okay? Let's say you make 10,000 a month and um, after everything, you have a thousand a month left over that you save. Okay, now let's say then you get a 20% raise. So now you're making 12,000 a month. So does that mean that you're, what you're gonna save is gonna go up by 20%? So, and the truth is, see, you see, it might go up. So you might go from 1,000 to 1,200 a month savings, or it could do something else. Like really you're living in your lifestyle. So you could actually invest all of that extra 2,000. So it could go way up more than that. But also you may find that, oh, you just go and spend it. You may end up investing none of it. You just go spend the extra money. So just because the, the top line, the G, you know, goes up, doesn't mean your, your stock market uh, goes, you know, uh, does the same thing. And, you know, there's lots of things that can, even if the economy is flat, going nowhere, companies can uh, get new products. They can cut costs. They can reorganize. There's, um, they, can, they can do all kinds of things to increase their prop, their bottom line, even if it's not necessarily affecting the top line. So another reason why they're just not relevant. So 
Now, there's two main reasons that, that, that they're not relevant. You know, even partly because they just measure very different things. But, you know, the stock market forecasts the economy, not the other way around. Okay, think of it, the stock market's the head, the economy is the tail. So now if you look at investors, they're always trying to guess, uh, they're looking at their company and where do they think the profits are gonna be? And basically part of what they think is happening the economy and with the company uh, over the next year, nine months or a year is kind of where they, how much, how much they are willing to pay for this company. So to a reasonable extent, the stock market picks, uh, affects the economy for next year, okay? Now, so that's why knowing the economy now um, tells you quite a bit about the stock market last year, but not next year. So for, for example, uh, we're talking about all the crap that's happening in the economy today. So what does that tell you? Well, so you know how, how investments are down earlier this year? So that's so investments were down. That's telling you that there's going to be some crap coming on in the economy, okay? But the investments are already down, okay? Looking at the crap in the economy doesn't tell you about the investments, because because uh, that's it's it's the other way around that it works. So the other part is that it, you know expectations of the economy are already built into the prices uh, of stocks. So you know what? So the economy may go through some crap, but you know, like investors are always looking at what's happening. So this is already, to the extent that all the crap that's gonna happen in the economy is known, that's what the existing crisis is about. So we know about high interest rates and inflation and, and the war and that kind of stuff. That's part of why, uh, why stocks have been down earlier this year, and that's gonna be a problem for the next, or the next year in the economy. But, but you see, it's already built into the price. So to affect the stock market has to be some new information that we don't yet know, All right? So to remember, you can't tell where the head is going by studying the tail. So you cannot tell where the stock market is going by studying the economy. All right, so this is, let me just give you a little bit of perspective on this. So first of all, you know, like we, we said it's 15 to 23%, 15% for current year, 23% for uh, predicting uh, the stock market predicting next year's economy. So it's, it's it's basically nothing. And you know what? So you think if I'm trying to if I'm trying to look at what's happening in the market and predict what's going to happen, you you know um, what it is. It's um, you have a 23 percent. If you look at the economy, let's say you knew everything happening in the economy today. Well, that would give you with 23 percent accuracy, you could predict what's going to happen last year in the stock market. But that's kind of crazy because I already know what happened in the stock market. You know, the old famous Yogi Berra quote, quote, it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. Well, you know, it's pretty easy to make predictions about last year. We already know what happened on, on there. So, and you know, I, I give you another, if you want to be something that's more accurate. So if you just always predict that the stock market will go up, just always, always predict that, you're going to be right about 75% of the time. And that's way more often that you'll be, than you'll be right if you study the economy. So the, the way to look at it here is if, if your investments are we're down, we're down around point, I think I'm, I'm mentioning this now because markets are down somewhat this year, you know, 20% or a bit, bit more. So, um, uh, so we're, in, we're in this position where they're somewhat down and, and now people are seeing what's happening in the economy. And does that make it going to go down? Is it going to go down worse? So what should we think about our stocks? I think the way to think about it is you're invested in a bunch of companies. You know, you may have the actual stocks or you might have, um, you know, mutual funds or ETFs that buy stocks. <laughs> Pardon me. And the question is, are the companies actually worth 20% less? You know, if they're not, I know most of the companies we're invested in are still growing, sales are up, and they're still growing very fast. They're not actually worth less. There's just a lot of negative sentiment going on in the market right now. So Warren Buffett talks about, you know, Mr. Market, which is what the overall market is telling you. And Mr. Market is kind of a, uh, uh, yeah, uh, what do you call it? He's, part, he's very happy and very sad, very emotional guy up and down. And it tell you, you know, the market tells you high prices for your stocks and low prices for your stocks. But really, those are not the real values. The real values is what's happening with the company and what's, what's happening over time. So I can tell you, we're looking at it. This is actually a really good buying opportunity in the, in the market right now. We don't know where the bottom is, but it's going to be, but I think it's a really good buying opportunity. And you, well, like usually, 
the market usually recovers long before the economy does. So you can't wait for the economy to look, you know, when the economy looks better, uh, you got to buy in while it's, while, while it's low. So, now, the interesting thing is I've been to tons of fund manager presentations in the financial industry. The normal thing when a, when a professional investor talks, what they do is the first thing they tell you is, is here's what's here's the, the talk is kind of here's what's happening in the economy and therefore that's what we're doing. Now it's like you know what that's kind of dumb because what's happening in the economy it just shouldn't affect what you're doing it should affect what you did last year, right? So um, we spend our time looking for you know the all-star fund managers the world's best fund managers, and so our general view is the more a professional investor talks about the economy the worst investor he probably is. You don't want to hear, hear him talk about his process and the companies invested in and that kind of stuff. But it's it's not, you know, he, he, he if he's a, if he's using looking at the economy and trying to figure out what to do, then that's just that's just not a very he's probably not a very effective investor. So all right, so the next time you hear news about the economy, um, remember that it tells you virtually nothing about what's going to happen to your investments. So just repeat to yourself, the stock market is the head of the dog. The economy is the tail. You can't tell where the head is going by studying the tail. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, if you like this video and or find my, my um, insights interesting, then uh, please like and share the video and both the article on my blog and on, on YouTube channel. By, by um, subscribing there, all that happens is you get my videos uh, or and articles sent directly to your ma mail, uh, your email. That's all we do with it. There's no other marketing. So, um, so now instead of kind of searching for it, you can just get, have them sent directly to you. So my name is Ed Rempel. Uh, my blog is Unconventional Wisdom. It's the number one blog in Canada for a financial planner. And remember, I'm the, the unconventional wisdom guy that tells you tells you the things that you, that, um, how things actually work. My blog is edremple.com. If you hit the contact button, you can get it. You can ask for a free 30 minute consultation if you're potentially interested in working with us. So um, thanks a lot for listening and we'll talk to you next week.